Welcome to this Moat video walkthrough. My name is Greg and I'm an educational advocate for Moat and I'm really excited to share this concept with you to use Moat in a creative way when it's paired with Google Slides and QR codes. And the whole purpose of this is to allow educators to create audio stations in their classroom where students can scan QR codes with a mobile device and hear guidance via audio from their teacher, um, have support for an independent workstation, or maybe audio instructions where you're clarifying the task or challenge that you're providing to your students. If you're working with younger students, emerging readers, lower elementary grades, this audio scanned by a mobile device via our QR code could be reading a short passage that students will then practice independently. So there's a host of applications for this approach. So what we're gonna do now is walk through the whole technique with you. And what we'll use for tools is Google Slides, the Moat Chrome extension, and then we'll use a QR code generator to turn these Google Slides into scannable QR codes. Now the beauty of this whole setup is that once you create your templates, say four different Google Slides with four connected QR codes, you don't have to make the QR codes again, you don't have to recreate the Google Slides, you can simply swap out the audio that's provided because the, because the QR codes point to the exact same set of slides every time. So let's go through the whole process and set you up so you can begin to use Moat Google Slide QR code stations in your classroom. So what I have here is a set of Google Slides and you'll notice on the left hand side, this slide would be for station one or workspace number one. I'm going to add my Moat audio on the left hand side and then maybe if I have links or materials or a question or a prompt, I might put that on the right hand side in that materials box. So to record my audio, I'm simply going to tap on the Moat Chrome extension that I already have installed. We'll get this pop up. I can tap on the M right in the middle of the screen to begin recording my voice. And now it's picking up everything that I'm saying. So with the full version of Moat, you have 90 seconds of audio that you can add directly into your slides. If you need a bit more recording time, no problem. Record part one, maybe label it as part one in the audio space, and then record a second Moat audio file to add in, again, to provide guidance, um, maybe clarify directions, provide an audio prompt for students. And the idea here is to make the station more accessible to the students. And even in, in essence, you can duplicate yourself and be in multiple places at once, even though you might be with one group of students or in one part of the room, students in these independent or small group stations can have you connected there via audio from Moat and Google Slides. When I'm done, I'll tap the M again on the middle of the screen. This will begin to process and once Moat is done thinking, I'll tap insert and then my audio file will drop directly onto my slides. So now let's tap insert and we'll wait for that file to process. All right, so now we have the audio file. I'm just gonna resize this, drag it into my audio space here. And this is what students will be able to listen to when they have access to this audio uh, station set of Google Slides. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we might want multiple stations set up. So what I'm gonna do right now is simply copy this slide, open up a new tab, head to Google Slides, I'll type slide.new. I'm going to paste that exact same slide, but then just take out all the particulars that point to station number one. So I will call this audio station two. I'm going to get rid of that original audio file, make this my station two slide, make this my station two slide, and now I'm ready to add my materials that will point to the audio for station two. Now what I could always do right now as well is do file, make a copy. I'll make a copy of the entire thing, and this might be for audio station three, and I can do this as many times as needed. Now what I would also do is keep this, uh, keep all of these tabs open because we're gonna refer back to them later. So I think you get the idea now. In Audio Station 2, I can add my audio. Audio Station 3, I can add my Moat audio. Now there's a few steps to turn this into a QR code station. I'll go back to Station 1. And what I'm going to do right now is go File and Publish to the Web. 
Now, the reason why I'm taking my slides and publishing to the web is because I don't want my students to have to be logged into any Google account when they scan that QR code. I want them to scan and just pop open that audio support immediately. Once I've published those slides, I'll copy the link to my published slides and then head to my favorite QR code generator. You can find any generator that you like using. In this case, I found one that I use often. I'm going to paste the URL and notice that is a published link and there is my QR code that's generated. What I can do now is download this QR code and then I can put that anywhere I'd like printed in the classroom. I might make it a bit bigger. I might attach it to a specific physical location in the class. But the beauty of this is I don't have to change that code. All I have to do now is print that code once and change the audio on the slides. So let me demonstrate what this looks like when this QR code is scanned with a mobile device. So now that we have that QR code generated, what I'll do now is grab my iPad, simply open up the camera and scan that QR code and I'll show you how that's going to point me directly to that one slide with the audio that's been added. So there we go. I've scanned the QR code with my iPad and it's pointed to that slide. Now all I have to do is tap on that audio and then it will play and provide those audio instructions. Now, like we mentioned earlier, the beauty of this setup is that I can reuse this QR code and simply point it to different audio. Let me show you how to do that process now. So we're back at the station one slides and I'm going to make a change to this file, but use the same QR code to show you how you can reuse the slides with the same QR codes again and again in your classroom. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to take this audio file and just move it over a little bit. I'll record another quick audio file. So here's my second audio file. This might be a new one for a new station or a second pass at using these QR codes for a totally different intention and purpose, but I can leave them up in my classroom. So I'll stop, hit insert once this file is done. And then what you'll see is I'll have two audio files on this same slide, same QR code, but we'll scan it again for a totally different outcome. So let's just resize this. I'll even darken the previous one so we can tell that that's the old one. There we go. And now I'm gonna scan this with my iPad again, but we'll have a different result. So here's the QR code. I'll pull up my iPad. Let's scan this QR code. There it is pointed to Safari and it opens up and there we go. Same QR code, same slides, totally different audio experience. So that's the whole process of using Moat with Google Slides and QR codes to create reusable audio stations in your classroom. So I hope this idea helps, gives you a creative lens about thinking about how to use Moat in your classroom. Thanks for checking out the video and we'll be back with more creative ideas of Moat. Stay tuned.